open the door for somebody else. Welcome in to the Vaccine Conversation with Melissa and Dr. Bob. We are back for part two of a, what I've actually found is a very fascinating discussion on coronavirus vaccine, all based on this one article out of Canada. Um, what is it called? It's a uh, Saskatchewan Herald, May uh, 7. Calls come for Canada to make COVID-19 vaccine mandatory for all citizens. And we just had a, you know, a nice long discussion about the first two paragraphs of this, <laughs> of this, it only uh, took us an hour of this three-page <laughs> article. No, but uh, you know, talking about all kinds of interesting, all sorts yeah, of interesting. Yeah, things. now we're going to talk about um, how this uh, this uh, newspaper staff is proposing that the Canadian government could go about making this vaccine mandatory for the but Canadian citizens. It doesn't sound like it's just their idea. It sounds like this has been something that has been in the works for a while um, about right. how to implement mandatory vaccines, mm -hmm. what steps to take, what rights to take away. So it does feel like um, this has been thought very well thought out. I highly doubt this is just the Saskatchewan Herald staff that came up with this. I feel like this is something that has probably been given out to public health departments over time. And they're aware of um, exactly the steps that they need to take. And this was concerning to me when I first saw this because of what you're about to hear from us. Right. And it's also how would a liberal government go about um, using government overreach to, um, to mandate and force something on all of its liberal citizens who will accept it, but how to trick all the conservative citizens um, into going along with this kind of agenda. And we talked about... Um, how they did a focus now, that political focus, and it's not just about anti-vaxxers are going to stop the, the progress here for, for solving coronavirus. It's conservatives are going to stop the process now because they refuse to believe in science. That's a quote. Mm -hmm. And they refuse to accept vaccinations. That's also another quote. So, and, and they're calling them badly informed. So if you have conservative beliefs, you are all three of those things. And you can find out more in our part one <laughs> episode. But then it goes into actual title here. How could the government regulate the need for max vaccination? And it goes into two very clear ways that they could make a vaccine mandatory. What's funny is I have friends in Canada uh, who do not believe in mandatory vaccinations, mm -hmm. and there is a question of whether or not their citizens would be up for this plan that they're about to propose, and whether or not American citizens or other citizens around the world would be up for this plan. So it's a two-part plan. They're starting with the two different ways that they could regulate and make vaccines mandatory for coronavirus. Um, and it doesn't even say coronavirus, so it just says in general, make these mandatory. Right. And those two ways are criminalization or regulation. Right. And then they talk about how criminalization, <laughs> um, they say, is the harsher of these two methods. And it would make failure to vaccinate within a specified time a criminal offense. You would have criminal penalties like fines, probation, or jail time. And you know, for failure to obtain vaccination as mandated by your public health authorities. So what do you think about that? What do you think about the idea of actually offering fines, probations, or jail time, a criminal penalty for not receiving a vaccine that they deem needs to be mandated? What do you think about that? Well, some countries already have some of that. Mm -hmm. um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Australia, don't they have some sort of financial penalty now if you don't vaccinate? Some sort of... I don't know. Um, or maybe that's more of a regulation. Maybe it's a tax incentive or a tax penalty. So maybe not. But um, I mean, I've heard there have been a lot of proposed things that have come out and there have been a lot of concerns. Um, I, I don't know which ones have actually gone through or not. But um, I did just happen to see somebody from Australia that was like arrested for peacefully protesting. And she has like a child, a boy, the same age wow. as my son, wow. who they literally rip from her arms as they take her to arrest her. And they literally ripped a crying child out of her arms. Yeah. And she was not being problematic. She wasn't, she was peacefully protesting. I know that the climate there is very... Uh, can be very aggressive around this topic. And people are taking these kinds of steps are going a little further, a little further, yeah. being arrested for not wearing a mask now in some states oh, in our country. Geez. 
We're seeing yeah. people violence against people for these types of things. And, it, and it, people are wondering, is this becoming a police state? Yeah. And yeah. this concern about vaccines would be the same thing. You've got this kind of implementation seems criminal penalties. Yeah. Yeah. I think no matter how you feel about vaccination and, and most people are pro vaccination, most people like vaccines, you have to examine is it so critical and, and would a coronavirus vaccine be so critical that those who don't accept the vaccination that we can label them as criminals they'll then have a criminal record a permanent criminal mm -hmm. record possibly the rest of their lives you know jail time probation fines that i mean it, it that's not a small matter and i think you have to think about a matter of, of rights and freedom and and the constitution and do the public health authorities have the right? I mean, they they probably do have the legal right to mandate things because we've given them certain emergency powers and certain police powers. But is that okay? And and citizen, do citizens actually want our public health authorities to have that kind of power? Do we want them them to have that power for anything? And I I would think not. And I would think most uh, kind of a moderate or middle ground citizens would not want their government to be able to mandate any type of medicine. Because I think there's always going to be uh, exceptions, um, people who shouldn't get a certain medicine, mm -hmm. but there's always going to be risk. I mean, we know every vaccine is going to have side effects and the coronavirus vaccine, we know there's going to be side effects so there's even going to be fatal reactions. Every single vaccine on the planet has had a fatal reaction. So we know everyone has a small chance of dying for any, any time they get a vaccine. So is it okay to mandate something like that? Or do you as an individual want the choice? Do you want to sit in your doctor's office and make an informed decision, you know, giving your consent to medical intervention? Or do you want the government to mandate it? And if you say no, do you want the police to come to your house, drag you out, put you in jail? take your kids away um, uh, for not vaccinating. Do you want that over this issue? Do you want that over any issue, first of all? But do you want that over the coronavirus issue? Have we really gone that far? And if you don't want that, again, now's the time to stand up. Well, to remind everybody, we're talking about COVID-19, which has an over 99% recovery rate. So like far over, 99.5%, uh, 99. Six ninety nine point seven percent. We don't know the exact numbers, but it's very, very high. We're not even talking about something that's killing one out of every three people, because right, that's a completely right, different right, conversation right. where you, you're willing to to give some of your rights away when it talks about public safety like that. But they're taking these extreme mm -hmm. measures yeah, yeah. over something that is mild for most. Vast majority, it's mild for. Right. right. Plus, and those who it's serious for. They can certainly choose to get vaccinated. Their family members around them could choose to get vaccinated. And if you're a, a young, healthy family um, with no risk factors, um, you should be able to opt out of a medical intervention that has risk. Plus, you know, this is a little early to talk about this, but we don't Christmas? even- Christmas? Are we talking about Christmas yet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Melissa. Give me some good news. Santa, is Santa coming this year? Okay. Oh my gosh. What if Santa can't oh, travel this year? Oh my gosh. Dude. Um, no, where was I now? Um, no, <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, Good news. You said something. No, oh, we were going to talk well, about no, this yet. But um, some vaccines don't even prevent the spread of a disease. Mm -hmm. We don't know what coronavirus vaccine is going to do. Um, vaccines do one of two things. Number one, they can give you some antibody level in your bloodstream so that if you catch the disease, you'll still catch it and be contagious. You'll still be contagious. You just won't feel as sick. And that's like what the flu shot does, or that's what the whooping cough mm -hmm. vaccine does. That's what uh, the diphtheria vaccine does. In fact, that's even what the polio vaccine, the injected one does. You get bloodstream antibodies, so you don't feel as sick. You don't have serious complications of the disease, but you'll still catch all those diseases and be contagious. So is, is the coronavirus vaccine gonna work like that? Where, yeah, you have some, some bloodstream antibodies, but you'll still catch the germ in your respiratory tr tract and you'll still shed it. You'll still be contagious to everyone around you. You just won't 
to have a complication. You want to end up in the hospital. You want to end up on a ventilator. If that's the case, then the only benefit of that vaccine is personal benefit. So there's absolutely no public health benefit. It's not going to prevent the spread. If they're going to mandate a coronavirus vaccine, they're going to have to make it in a way where it does prevent you from getting infected. It does prevent you from even having the virus replicate in your mm -hmm. respiratory tract so you can't spread it around. And most vaccines don't even work that way. Mm -hmm. Most vaccines only work the first way. Some vaccines work the second way. And a lot of vaccines we don't know yet. It could work both ways. We just don't know. What is the coronavirus vaccine going to do? And if it's like the flu shot, it's not going to prevent the spread. It's not going to reduce the spread. Um, Which is the whole reason why they're making a vaccine is to reduce the spread I know. of the virus. Right, exactly. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, there would, be, there would be two reasons. And so the only reason to mandate it, like this article is suggesting, is if it's going to be a vaccine that works that way. So that has to be your first question. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a public citizen, as someone who talks to your legislators, I think it might be useful to very quickly and, and succinctly in, you know, two short sentences, make sure your legislator is aware of that, that, hey, the coronavirus, just like these other few vaccines, um, you know, the coronavirus vaccine might not even prevent the spread. So let's not... Let's not get ahead of ourselves and start talking about mandates yet. Mm. Let's first see what kind of vaccine we come up with. Let's see how well it works. Let's see what the side effects are before we start talking about treading on the rights of citizens and talking about, you know, uh, criminalizing those who right. don't accept the vaccine. And what's interesting in this article, so right after, so these are the kinds of things I pay attention to. You probably skipped right over these things. but no, I, um, saw it. I saw it. Well, no. The, 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 what's, the tweet from P. Talk. But what's, here's what's interesting is... Uh, Everything has a purpose in these articles, like I said. Yes, yeah. You know, somebody might take several days to write something that's only four paragraphs because everything needs to sort of lead mm -hmm. the listener or viewer or reader to a certain conclusion. Mm -hmm. So in this article so far, they covered a tweet from some political guy. And then it goes to this tweet from just a, just a person. This is not anybody important. This is an, some, some person who said, I just, need, I just had to unfollow a friend on Facebook. I watched them progress from a health conscious person to an absolutely crazy anti-vax COVID conspiracy theorist. The transition was quick, fueled by misinformed, or I guess what they mean is misinformation on social media. Quite frightening. Okay, I just want to draw attention to the fact that this only has 16 likes. So whoever this was is not somebody important, but they nobody's going to really think about that because they're going to see this tweet. They're going to assume this is somebody that has value, and they're mm -hmm. going to see this message, and that message is going to carry more weight mm -hmm. for the person reading this article. So key things on this tweet that I found interesting. Health conscious person seems so innocent. This is just a health, con these holistically minded health conscious people are, are going from normal, rational health conscious thought to crazy anti-vax conspiracy theorists. So putting anti-vax, which we know is the code word for questions, vaccine safety, or the questions, the vaccine program, putting that together with the word crazy, automatically, you're not intelligent anymore. Uh, you, you don't have rational thought. And then conspiracy theorists. You're instantly a conspiracy theorist if you have any questions about the safety of uh, an aggressive vaccine schedule or the vaccine program. And then the reason this, this innocent person that was originally health conscious mm -hmm. turned into a crazy anti-vax conspiracy theorist was because of buzzword misinformation on social media. So all I can tell you is that whoever wrote this is either never thinks for themselves and has literally just sucked up all the information they've ever been watching recently and used all the code words and buzzwords and sound bites. Or this is a paid troll who literally goes around right. and puts stuff out and uses right. the same buzzwords and sound bites. This is there is no original thought in this tweet at all. And it's all very it's a it's labeling, it's negative, it's accusatory, and uh, it makes absolutely no sense. But when they put it into a news article, right. people are reading this and it gives it weight. Oh, it, totally it gives does. it yeah. value. Yeah, it makes the reader think, oh, yeah, normal, regular citizens are agreeing with this article and saying the same thing these writers are saying. Oh, my gosh, am I a normal citizen, too? Am I? Do I need to 
rethink what, what I believe and then start to, you know, follow what these guys are saying because this normal citizen sure, thinks, sure uh, thinks it's a good idea. Right. But because it's in the article, people aren't thinking that this is some average Joe. They're thinking this is a viewpoint that is mainstream. And right, what the right. writers of this article got away with was saying what they wanted to say, oh, yeah. which is that anti-vaxxers are crazy conspiracy theorists right. and it's, they're fueled by misinformation on social media. But instead of them saying it and getting attacked for that because it wasn't, you know, very objective, they get to put it in like it's somebody else's opinion. Yeah, but they're okay. highlighting it in the article, which means they believe it yeah. because they want you to think a certain way about it. And yeah. I'll go into one thing that they do later as we move forward. Yeah, what I see a lot on social media is almost like the ultimate diss or the ultimate punishment from someone is to unfollow you mm. and i've had those messages and that's how i know they're trolls mm -hmm. oh yeah they're, they're, there's like there's like a, a script that trolls follow mm -hmm. and it'll always include i had to f unfollow you mm. i've loved and followed you for years right. and now suddenly i have to unfollow you as if oh my gosh the the world just ended for me I I've got to change the way. Yeah. We have to change the way I'm right. doing things because I'm losing followers. Right. I can't lose followers. Yeah. That, that's, and, and it's interesting how in our society that has mm. become such a horrible punishment that no one <laughs> wants. I mean, we can laugh at it, but I think it's planned. Yeah. I think it's targeted that way because other people are going to read this and think, oh, no, if, if I share this, people are going to unfollow me, too. I, right. I can't have that. It's happen. subliminal. It's it, it is very subliminal. Psychological but I think it's manipulation. Yeah, it's very much planned. So the second thing that I think is even a little scarier than the criminalization is this idea of regulation. And I love how they start out with something strong mm -hmm. to go, we're going to have a criminal penalty. Mm -hmm. But that might seem harsh. So we're going to go with, we maybe people, this will be more accepted, is option number, bachelor number two. <laughs> <laughs> and bachelor number two, I'll have you guys know, is... Also very freaking scary. Okay, so this is what it says about bachelor number two. It says they would use regulation. Okay, it would not make it a criminal offense, but they would include other sanctions like withholding tax refunds, federal benefits like a child tax, employment insurance, and pension. This is the most scary to me, denying the ability to work. Mm -hmm. I love how to, they just throw that in next to employment insurance as if you're not going to pay attention. They will deny you the ability to work and then denying a passport. So there, in that case, we have five things they mentioned, but denying the ability to work to me is should make everybody like huge red flags. Oh my God, are you serious? Because guess what? Every adult has a job. Right. So they're essentially saying they can find a way to regulate you to get you to comply by denying you the ability to provide for your family and provide a roof over your head and food on the table. And the way that they say they're going to do this is by these examples. And they're saying, because otherwise you're putting people at risk because you're not getting vaccinated. It doesn't even say if the vaccine's effective, doesn't say if it prevents the spread of tra or transmission, mm -hmm. and you're still going to be penalized and not be able to work to provide for your family if you don't get it anyway. And then it goes on to say, given the balance between the need for public health and personal liberty, Right. This is the age old argument mm -hmm. about uh, the last legal case that we have in the United States is the Jacobson versus Massachusetts, 1905. Um, this idea of public health, what can you do when and there's a public health emergency versus taking away somebody's personal liberties and the Constitution, which is what our country is founded on? It says, given that balance between public health and personal liberty, it says the regulatory approach might be the more likely response as if. This is the more friendly response, um, even though you're literally taking away people's basic liberties. And yeah. and this should have everybody on the roof going, what? I know. Are you serious? Like yelling, saying, they're going to take away my ability to work unless I get this vaccine. Yeah, you know, I I actually see denying somebody a passport as, as even almost yeah. worse. Really? I mean, you're, you're basically saying you are not allowed to leave the country. You are now a prisoner in this country. You can't leave the country. Do you think that's worse than not being able to make well, money? I think that's, I think that's huge. I think it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Well, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're both important and it's probably, you know, people have different opinions on it, but to me that is huge. And I think that's something that should really concern any citizen greatly. Can you imagine 
I mean, I mean, honestly, criminals already, if you are a criminal, you're, they take your passport away. You know, you you might be in jail, but even if you're released on jail, if you're on probation, yeah, you don't get a passport. Denying someone a passport, that's not a small thing. And to make someone, you know, basically um, a prisoner in their own country, say you're in Canada, you, you can't go over into the United States or you can't go on vacation in the Caribbean, all for simply not getting a coronavirus vaccine. I mean, that's a big deal. But you wouldn't be able to pay for a vacation in the Caribbean if you didn't have a <laughs> job. You, okay, fine. Okay, so like <laughs> just to provide basic food and pay for utilities and have a roof over your head, you have to be able to work. Why do you think people are protesting this quarantine and the lockdown? Because they're not able to work. Being able to work and make money is the most you know, primary need and yeah. freedom for anybody to survive. You have to make money to be able to buy the things that you need. And you have dependents like children. You need to make money. Yeah. You need to be able to work to threaten your ability to work. Now we've seen that in the healthcare world, right? They've already taken that away for people that don't get the flu vaccine. They've already made that man a mandatory condition of employment in some sectors. And we know for children to go to school, they have to do certain things as it relates to the you know, mandatory vaccines as well. But we're talking about the full adult population to be able to work. And the way they say this is so, so just matter of fact, maybe just taking away your ability to work, maybe. Um, yeah. That could be a way the government could regulate it. Yeah. And what they go into is probably the worst thing that I've seen. Yeah, this is really bad. It's, um, I almost can't believe anyone would write this. I mean, I could see this in maybe one person's opinion article. But for a newspaper editorial board, for the you know the the staff of a newspaper to actually write this, can I read the quote on yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. th this be prepared to be disturbed, and right. for people who have young children, this is going to really hit you probably even harder. When I read this, I just right. was I was so disturbed. It says for those who fail to have their children vaccinated, the state may have a simpler solution. Isn't it funny that they use the word simpler? <laughs> In declaring those children wards of the state in need of protective services until such time as they are vaccinated, vaccinating those children and returning them to parental care. So they are literally saying they will take your children, vaccinate them and return them to you. Yeah. So for any of you who thought, um, like, say, if you're a liberal thinker, um, that you thought, you know, the beginning of, of this article sounded okay and it all sounded like a really good idea. How do you feel now? Do you really think it's okay for a government to go that far and literally remove children from home, force vaccinate them, return them to their parents? Do you really think that's okay? And what do you think now about this newspaper staff for mm -hmm. saying that this is okay, and even calling it a simpler solution. Ugh. Simple. Oh, you know, let, let's not do, let's not take away their child tax benefits. Let's let them work. Let's give them passports. Let's not take all that away. Let's just take the kids away. And let's take their kids away and declare really them, okay? declare them a ward of the state. Yeah. Literally allowing your child to be under the protection, quote, protection of a government agency. Now, you know, one of the things we argue so much about as it relates to medical freedom and informed consent is this complicated notion of family medical history right. and genetic susceptibility. There are reasons people should not be vaccinated. If you are just taking children away from their homes to vaccinate them all and put them back in their homes, these people aren't going to understand the complicated family medical history. They're not going to understand okay. why that child right. is at risk. They're going to universally mass vaccinate all children, force vaccinate them if you don't comply um, and put them at risk of things we know, database information that we know causes can cause problems for many children and many adults. But of course, so much more difficult to witness this in a child who's removed from their home. How long would they be removed for? Are we talking about a week, a couple days? Can you imagine the trauma oh, yeah. that a child would go through to be taken away from the, and what age groups are we talking about? At what age are they going to be, how can they sufficiently care for my child that they're going to take away and do something like this? There has to be some legal recourse here. There is right. no way this could be illegal. 
there's not a public health crisis, like we've said before, that warrants this. Right, right. But even for me, what's even more disturbing or equally as disturbing is what kind of human being would be okay with this? What, what kind of person does it take to be a staff writer for the Saskatchewan Herald to think that this is okay? I wonder if any of these staff writers have children. You know what? I they pr Many of them probably don't. They're probably young staff or writers. Or they do. What's even worse, maybe some do and they're okay with this. They think this is okay. What kind of world? I, I mean... I mean, yeah, everyone has their right to their own opinion. Everyone has different opinions about things and everyone has different opinions about how to approach coronavirus. But to go this far, this should really scare people mm -hmm. that, you know, not only, you know, would a newspaper staff, you know, write this, but would a government even go this far and would society sit back and let this happen? That's really, really, really scary to me. And I think, too, a lot of people, like, I'm one of them. You know, you hear people go, oh, CPS is going to get involved and force vaccinate your child. And every time I see that stuff, I'm like, oh, that's extremist. That's not really ever happened. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of feel like that's not really a data-based argument. It's at least not that I've seen. It's kind of a worst-case scenario or maybe a fear that somebody might have. I, I understand the fear there. But this is an actual news article that is breaking down how they can do it and validating the step of somebody taking away your child vaccine vaccinating them for you and bringing them back to you. And this is no longer an extreme issue. This is no longer a conspiracy theorist thinking this could happen. We're talking about this is a mainstream news article in Canada that is saying that this is okay. And right. this is this should be the step that they take. And this is the less strict type of uh, step that they could be taking. This is simple. This is easy. Um, people, if you fail to get your child vaccinated, then this is what's going to happen to you. And then they, they, the next piece of like a photo that they add is a poll. Okay. And they add this poll. And here's the question. Are you in favor of mandatory vaccination for children? Of course, at the time of this poll, it wasn't talking about coronavirus vaccine. They're talking about just in general. And there were only 114 votes. But if you don't look at the fine print, you'll right. see that 88% of people said, yes, they're in favor of mandatory vaccination. So if you're a reader of this and you see that 88% agree with something and it's a big, bold bar, right? It's blue bar that says yes. And there's the teeniest, tiniest part that says no, and they have it in gray. So you don't like gray. You don't even notice it. So that you can already tell visually where they want you to go. You go to 88% say yes, then you're feeling like, should I be feeling yes about this too? Or I, oh, yeah, I, totally. I and no, it, it's, totally. this is psychological manipulation, but worse, this poll wasn't even about the coronavirus vaccine. This is just about childhood vaccination. And a lot of people agree that vaccination should be required, but many don't agree that exemptions should have been removed. And many don't agree it should be for all doses of all things. And many agree there should be medical exemptions, you know, broad medical exemptions that discuss family history and genetic susceptibility. What they're, This doesn't even relate to what we're talking about. And every time that they just say, should kids be vaccinated? Again, I come back to, with what yeah. and how yeah. many doses of it? Like nobody's nobody is qualifying this information. And throwing in a poll like that is used to help shape your belief system about this issue and how oh, yeah. you should how you oh, should totally. think. And and this this statement about children being taken away and, and how that's a simple solution and, and maybe maybe or maybe not or they're not endorsing that solution. To me, that's a great example of how really dangerous the whole coronavirus narrative is. I mean, you, you think, yeah, they're just going to shut down the economy for, you know, a, a month or two, and maybe that's okay. And even at the beginning, I thought that was okay. Yikes, a month or two? But, Jeez, that's long. I mean, that's long no, for the I know, economy. No, I, I know. But, but this potentially is world-changing in so many ways that are unintended, so many ways we can't even foresee. And if this ends up being the kind of thing where – families get their children taken away um, for not giving their kids the coronavirus vaccine, that should be a wake-up call. I mean, that that just shows you how dangerous this really is. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just about, you know, what do we do in the short term? And I mean, there, there's so much at stake here. 
so much of our, our freedoms and our humanity and, and our societies at stake here, it's not really, it's not only just do you dis, do you agree or disagree with a short term shutdown. Now they're trying to get you to agree with certain things one to five years from now. They're trying to get you to agree that it's okay to have people's children taken away. That I hope gets you off of your couch, out of your house, over to your legislators, you know, uh, state, you know, Capitol building. Um, I hope this gets you out to rallies. Hope it gets you out to protests. Um, not protesting against, you know, mandatory vaccination for coronavirus, but protesting the general narrative, the, uh, the narrative of fear, mm -hmm. the liberal narrative, the narrative where we're trying to give the government total control over our, our whole lives over this issue. That should get you outside and fighting this now. And hopefully it will. And then, of course, they go right on to talk about the reason we're in this predicament is because of this misinformation. They're calling it a yes. misinformation pandemic. I know. That, that's pretty brilliant, actually. And they're, they're talking about on social media, they've already, Facebook has already declared they're going to start censoring uh, inf misinformation about COVID. And again, what's misinformation? Who decides? Um, I heard they're creating a Supreme Court uh, of, in Facebook. They're actually creating Jeez. a Supreme Court of people to decide um, what should legally be allowed to stay up and not... And this mis this idea of misinformation we've talked about a lot, it's, you know, because you have information that is not popular or it's different than the mainstream, instantly it's considered misinformation. Like, I'm sorry if those facts are inconvenient, right. but facts are facts and all facts should be allowed to stay and all science should be allowed to be seen, not just the science that backs right. up the mainstream right. narrative. Right. And they are being... They always continue to throw into any of these vaccine things this idea about censorship being okay. It's okay that we're going to kind of stop the misinformation uh, because it's its own pandemic, according to this. I know. And not only is there, there – it's all in the same sentence. They talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and right. the misinformation pandemic. Now, everything that's a pandemic is now awful mm -hmm. and it must yeah. be avoided at all costs. Right. And, and they even, again, you know, take another shot at conservative, mm -hmm. conservatives here. They say, with conservatives especially susceptible to misinformation and lacking a grounding in fact-based science. What an awful thing to say. <laughs> how, how do these people know who conservatives are? Are you saying that there are no conservatives that are doctors and attorneys and educated professionals? I That's know. ridiculous. I know. And so they say the government may need to take extraordinary measures to ensure everyone's safety. And in, in case you didn't know, um, the Canadian um, Constitution, they call it the Canadian's Charter, um, they actually um, state in there that vaccines cannot be mandatory. Like like uh, Canadian citizens have the right mm. to, to opt out of vaccination. And there, but different Canadian provinces are right now in, in legislative battles over this, mm -hmm. right? but it is in the Canadian constitution. So what this, what this uh, newspaper article is suggesting is already going against mm -hmm. Canadian, you know, the Canadian constitution. And again, that should be another wake up call, you know, and anything that's going to go again. I mean, can you imagine if, if, if the Orange County uh, Register editorial board wrote something that, and they admit in their article, oh, by the way, you know, the U.S. Constitution gives you as a citizen the right, you know, to this. But we think that's not a good idea anymore. We mm. think that right should be taken away. That's a, that's a big issue. Right. And they say, quote, mandatory vaccinations may constitute an infringement on the Canadians, charters, the Canadians charter rights, but such an infringement would be justifiable. Right. And it's funny that they say justifi justifiable and then say in a free society. <laughs> it's like, well, what's free about taking yeah. away... Uh, in you know, infringing on these um, these what are supposed to be basic rights, and it says mandatory vaccinations may be an infringement, but such an infringement would be justifiable by who? Who would say that this is justifiable? And and then of course they go back into the blame game, which is for those who don't wish to engage in the social responsibility of properly informing themselves. <laughs> and again, what information? 
What constitutes properly informing yourself? Why do you assume somebody that comes to a different conclusion hasn't informed themselves? Maybe those people have informed themselves and that's why they came to a different conclusion. And that's kind of the point. It says, so it says, if you're one of those people that just doesn't really figure out how to inform yourself according to the way they want you to, the government needs to step in. This is yeah. extremely yeah. one-sided. And you know what I find really funny? If this was a Republican or conservative media outlet, people would say this is extremist, extreme right wing, whatever. Yeah. But because this is liberal, this is just science. It's just facts. It's just information. <laughs> but to me, this is very extreme. This is a very extreme liberal viewpoint yeah. to go this far with everything that they're saying. This is absolutely 100%. There's no balance in journalism here. There's no objectivity. Right. And it doesn't matter that this is written by the staff as an editorial, if, if they actually write it down as an editorial. It doesn't even matter because, again, people are viewing this as news. It comes from a news outlet, a media outlet. And um, they are taking that to their advantage that people are just going to read it as if it's fact. And they are slowly manipulating the way that you're supposed to think about this. I want to make sure that people learn how to dissect things. And I want yeah, to make sure people yeah. learn how to see things for what they are so that you can be your own um, uh, decider of what is real and what isn't real. And you should read things on both sides of the of the aisle. And you should be getting information from real sources that are not just mainstream news because you have to understand there is motivation for certain things, motiv motivation for certain narratives. There are actual agendas. That's not a conspiracy theory argument. That's just the reality of how business works. And media, you guys, is a business. It is a business. They are paid for by advertisers. Their advertisers have interests. They have to satisfy their advertisers. And that means taking certain things out of the news and it mm -hmm. means putting a lot more of certain things in the news including advertisements which are in between the news segments so whether we want to believe this or not media is a business everything that's a business is motivated by profit by profit and money it's how they survive and pay for their employees like it's a bit you know everybody wants to work that's their their job is to work and um if you understand that then you'll understand there is a bias behind everything that comes out. And when you read an article like this, by no means was this, here's one side and here's what other people think. You come to your own conclusion. That's the way it should be because that's what journalism is supposed to be. That's mm -hmm. how you become objective. You give facts, you make everybody else come to their conclusion on their own. But that's not what journalism is anymore. And it's certainly not that way on politics. And it's not that way on what we've seen in the medical freedom or medical mandate movement, essentially, is we are seeing a lot of opinion masquerading as fact and a lot of manipulation, um, trying to push the viewers to think a certain way about people who question authority, people who do not comply. We're seeing the same thing about the protesters for the lockdown. They want you to think a certain way about them. They want you to think that they're selfish. They want you to think they're putting people at risk. They want you to think that they are pro-disease. They want you to think that uh, they're putting money over lives. They're creating that feeling so that when you see a protester, you drive by one, on your way to an essential business because you shouldn't be out. <laughs> if you drive by one that you instantly have thoughts about these people that you mm. might not even realize where they're coming from. You instantly are shaking your head at them or you are booing them out your window. And it's like these people actually don't understand maybe even where those thoughts came from, but that they were subliminally planted there by mm. the news that they've been watching that has told you what to believe about these people. Forget the fact that the people out there protesting are small business owners or people who've lost their jobs and are trying to feed their families, because I guarantee you wouldn't be thumbs downing those people. But because that's not what the media is telling you about who those people are, then you don't even know and you're not going to take the time to find out. And this manipulation through information is perhaps the most scary thing because it turns into action. It turns into action from policymakers. It turns into action from the public. It turns into belief yeah. systems and it turns yeah. into yeah. hate. 
it turns yeah. into division and hate and they get people to turn on themselves so they don't have to do it for you. It's like so yeah. very calculated. And I just want people to be able to see this stuff on their own. I want you guys to be able to read an article like this and be able to point out just like we are, look at this and look at this. And isn't this interesting? Every single thing is by design. In order to be a critical thinker, you have to be able to dissect everything. You cannot, you can no longer just read the headlines. You right. can never read a headline and skim it. You have to click on it, read through the whole thing and get past the first couple paragraphs. You have to learn how to see the entire story here and what they want you to believe. And again, like I said earlier, who they want you to blame because there's always somebody they want mm. you to blame. And sometimes that's just in the photo. Sometimes it's in the photo. They'll go Corona, coronavirus death toll, you know, skyrockets in such and such county. And the photo they use are protesters with American flags. <laughs> so what do you think the yeah. conclusion is going to be for you as a reader? The protesters are responsible for the death toll skyrocketing. They, they find a way to give you that connection without you even realizing it happened. And this yeah. is happening not just in, you know, vaccines. It's not just happening in coronavirus. It is, happens all the time. But we have become so dumbed down as a population that we don't yeah. see it. So I encourage you guys to become more investigative on your own. And I know a lot of our listeners are already that way, which is what brought them here in the first place. But I've had people message me later going, oh my gosh, I'm seeing it now. Now when yeah, I see an yeah. article, I see what you're saying, what you guys break down on the podcast, I can see it and do it myself. And that's what I want yeah. people to do. I want to help awesome. them learn how to do this. Yeah, and something that's uh, scary to me, well, it's not scary, it's it's just the truth, is um, many people in our country, uh, US and Canada and, and all over the world, would share these kinds of views, so it would agree with this article. And maybe not the part about taking away your kids, I hope, but, you know, people with, with liberal views uh, who, you know, vote for, you know, liberal uh, legislators, they probably have these views. And I would, I think a lot of our listeners don't have these views, but maybe some of our listeners do. But everyone out there listening to this, you have friends who probably think this is a great article. And so you have to, I think, try to figure out how to reach them how to bridge the gap between your beliefs and their beliefs. Um, you know, there are people out there that just really think the government has us under control. They know what they're doing. They're just going to listen to what the governor says, listen to what their government tells them to do because they don't have the time to research it and figure it out. They don't have the expertise. And um, they just want someone else to tell them what to do. And they trust in the government to do that. I mean, that's a real belief system. And some people really, really are secure that way. And I think to try to change this narrative so it doesn't really, you know, tear apart the fabric of our society as we know it, I think you really need to start trying to reach people like that um, as a neighbor and as a friend. And I mean, I don't know what all the best ways to do that. It's something you're going to have to figure out by getting to know them. You know, why do they, you know, why do they think, you know, a, a six month shutdown is a great idea? Why do they, you know, think our, gov our governor is doing a great job? Start asking people. I mean, have these conversations with people because I think we need to shift the narrative away more towards a moderate narrative and, and away from the fear and away from the government overreach. I'm not saying let's turn everyone into a conservative or let's make everything, you know, Republican and take back our country. I'm saying- well, Why do we even need the I, labels? Why do we even have to be one or the other? Right, we, we don't because probably most people are probably in the middle somewhere. You know, it's like, like the middle majority, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of liberals and conservatives probably agree with each other on this issue and with health freedom and government overreach. Um, and so I think it, it's, it's, I think, beholden up, up, upon all of us to start talking to people to try to get them to explore this issue. And because we want to come out of this um, with, you know, upcoming elections, you know, elections in the years to come to elect, whether they're Democratic or Republican, elect wise leaders. They're going to make database decisions, not politically based decisions when it comes to the health of our country and when it comes to our economy and what to do with coronavirus specifically. And the more people we can educate about this, um, not again saying that our side is the right side, but the more that we can educate 
that that there's there's got to be some you know moderate balanced uh well-rounded approach to all this that we can all agree on that's going to be better for all of us instead of an extremist view whether it's one side or the other so you got to start getting out there not just to your legislators and protests and rallies but your um your your fellow neighbors your family members strike up the conversations just on these kind of kind of these issues and and talk about you know you know how the this article bothered you about when they went so far as to uh you know take away your kids i mean someone who knows and loves your family maybe they have liberal views and you challenge them would you really want you know the police to come take my kids away and force the coronavirus vaccine on them if your neighbor says no i guess that is going a little bit far you need to let them know well if you keep electing people that think this is a good idea then that could happen someday mm -hmm. do you want that, that to happen to your kids we need to draw the line somewhere and so we we got to get out there and 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 uh step up our efforts to reach people so i agree yeah Thank and you. with that we conclude our part two all right of well and we're vaccines. coming up with part three uh <laughs> No, no we're kidding. not. Okay. So no, part uh, three. no. Okay. Um, but uh, if you haven't checked out part one, definitely go back and check that out as well. And um, we will have the link to this article for everyone. This is new. Um, we, we started out so calm and then we got all fired up. And then up. you got all, know, all heated. <laughs> Somebody please give Melissa's him a bad like, review. <laughs> please. This is like wiping sweat off of her brow, <laughs> though. And, uh, not yeah. true, not true. Um, yeah, anyway, so. This is really fascinating. I mean, honestly, yeah. I saw this. I yes, say. <laughs> like everything else I give to you. So she texted me. She texted me this article. She's like, we got a podcast on this. We got a podcast today. I'm like, I skimmed it, right? I just skimmed it. I'm like, well, it doesn't seem very interesting. It just seems maybe we can mention it, I guess. You're like, it's just and a you, mention at the beginning of another yeah. one. What else, What other topics and do we have? Yeah, I know. What did you text me? I was you're like, like, no, this is the no, topic. Like, read did it. Did you read it? <laughs> I'm like, no, I didn't actually read it. So I read it and I'm like, holy cow. No, but even after you read it, you probably, yeah. until you really break it down this way, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. this is, these are the kinds of conversations yeah, people crazy. need to have with each other because when you can go line by line and say, but what about this? And this leads to this, you realize every single one of these things has a lot of implication for us as a society. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, and so it it just you know fostered a very, very um, yeah. what's the word a very fruitful yeah. discussion. Enlightening. Um, and this is I mean, this very is enlightening. Yeah. So thank you for uh, for bringing that to us. And um, as you bring almost all of these articles <laughs> to us, the I same said, the <laughs> same percent as who recover from coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. But no. This this was uh, this was a lot of fun. Thank you for letting me. Uh, I guess process through this because I, yeah. I mean I you know I came up with I think a lot of things I I wouldn't even have thought about thinking about. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, I'm just so, looking right now. So yeah. remember that poll I was telling you about? Are you in favor of mandatory vaccination for children? Yeah. That poll was February of 2019, by the way. <laughs> oh, so that was literally geez. 14, 15 months ago. And again, wow. it has 114 votes. I'm just That's it's amazing. just funny. These are the you know go read the details, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Read the fine print. Yeah. Do not take in information without reading the fine right. print. Every study that you read, make sure you read competing interests and financial interests that they have yeah. at the end that they and limitations Ooh. of the studies. Yeah, and, and go to the Saskatchewan Herald, May 7, calls come for Canada to make COVID-19 vaccine mandatory for all citizens. Go to their social media, go to their website, give them, you know, a like or a dislike. A piece of your mind. On. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know if they openly post comments, but you can definitely share whether or not you like or dislike the article and let, let's let's let them know how you canadians and how us uh um us americans feel about this article because that maybe that matters maybe they'll see all the dislikes and they'll be like oh no we were wrong and they'll post a rebuttal right well they definitely went too far and and we just talked about why I take my kids away or anyone's kids away. No, this is this is absolute Darn absolute it. over <laughs> uh, government overreach, and yeah. and uh, this should be a warning a warning for everybody listening. So Stephanie is is my friend lives in Canada. You need to organize a protest. To go to the Saskatchewan Herald, a peaceful, nice, calm protest, and let them know how you feel about their opinion on this. And thank you guys for tuning in as always, and we will catch you next time on the Vaccine Conversation.
The information in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as medical advice. Always consult your healthcare professional for information on vaccines and infectious diseases.